How's it going, guys? It is 3.53 a.m., 16th of June here in Japan. We have a passable question for Rheumatology Amino, Step 1, Internal Medicine 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, element underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man, underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip. 42-year-old woman, she has rheumatoid arthritis. And her hemoglobin is low. 10.5 grams per deciliter should be 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. 13 to 17.5 non-menstruating women and men. Ferritin is normal, 150. You could be aware that 300 or greater is hemochromatosis. So if we have if we have a normal ferritin in the setting of a low hemoglobin in someone who has autoimmune disease, that's anemia of chronic disease. I don't want to get too heavy on the hematology right now, but I'm just remarking as to why the hemoglobin is low and the ferritin is normal. Question wants to know which of the following antibodies most likely support diagnosis in this patient. Let's just whip through the answer choice here. Should I say ANCA, anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody? Wrong fucking answer. going to refer to a myriad of conditions, the vasculitides in particular, which is going to be Wegener, which, which aka granulomatosis polyangitis. So going to be hematuria hemoptysis plus heditis colloquially, otitis, sinusitis, nasal septal perforation. So C ANCA, aka antiprotonase 3. And then we've got P ANCA. Uh, AKA antimyeloproxase MPO for microscopic polyangiitis, going to be just red urine. Could be Churg Strauss, eosinophilic granulomatosis polyangiitis. It's going to be eosinophilia, eosinophilia plus an asthma like presentation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, antinuclear antibody, wrong fucking answer. So this is non specific for any condition. It's wrong on eosinophilia for any diagnostic utility. Okay, so. There are patients who, by all means, don't even have autoimmune disease where ANA could sometimes be positive. The only theoretical utility is that it's highly sensitive for lupus more than any other condition. Okay, so meaning if it's negative, we can rule out lupus greater than 98%. But for USMLE purposes, as I just said, it doesn't serve a diagnostic utility. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, desmoglein, wrong fucking answer. So, component of desmosomes. For pemphigus vulgaris, in contrast, if we have hemidesmosomes for bullous pemphigoid, so pemphigus vulgaris is worse than bullous pemphigoid because we have oral involvement as well as positive Nikolsky sign, which is slothing the skin with friction. So pemphigus vulgaris, the desmosomes are located within the epidermis where we can get intra-epidermal blisters. They can say in the question, we're going to get immunofluorescence with a net-like or fishnet-like pattern. Bulls pemphigoid, we can get uh, sub-epidermal blisters, and we can get linear immunofluorescence because the hemidesmosomes are located at the base of membrane. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, IgG, FC region, correct answer. So you need to know that rheumatoid factor is an IgM antibody that targets the FC region of IgG. If it's the first time you're hearing it, it might sound weird, but it's past level, okay? And, and interestingly, it's not the most specific antibody for rheumatoid arthritis. Anti-CCP, which is anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide, is more specific for rheumatoid arthritis. But I don't really know what to tell you. You just have to know that rheumatoid factor, as I just fucking said, is an IgM antibody that targets the FC region of IgG. They ask on the NBME exams. Let me just quickly whip through the other answer choice here. Choice E, anti jo one antibody, wrong fucking answer. First to polymyositis, dermatomyositis, so proximal muscle weakness, plus increased creatine kinase and or weakness on physical exam. That's polymyositis. If we add skin findings on top of it, we now just simply call that dermatomyositis. So heliotrope rash, violaceous, which is violaceous eyelids, shawl rash, which is a macular papular body rash, gotrin papule, so violaceous papules on the knuckles, mechanics hands, which are rough surface hands. Wrong fucking answer. Choice F, microsomal antibody, wrong fucking answer, aka antithyroproxase for Hashimoto. So in addition to antimicrosomal slash antithyroproxase, there's also antithyroglobulin. So Hashimoto, just most common cause of hypothyroidism in Western countries, autoimmune, uh, aka chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. You're going to have a down arrow for T3, T4, up arrow for TSH worldwide. We would simply have iodine deficiency as the most common cause of hypothyroidism. Wrong fucking answer. Choice G, anti-smooth muscle antibody, wrong fucking answer, refers to autoimmune hepatitis. It's a diagnosis of exclusion on USMLE, exceedingly rare to ever see this, okay? 
So when students don't don't know an answer, they choose weird sounding shit. It'll be a woman, 20s to 30s, who has increased AST, ALT, and you've been able to eliminate all the other answer choices. So you'd get the question and you'd be like, well, it's not fucking Hodgkin lymphoma. It's not Hashimoto thyroiditis. You're just eliminating. And then you're left with a scenario where, okay, it's a woman who's 28 and she's got high ALT, AST, and I've eliminated the other ones. And maybe it's just smooth muscle for autoimmune hepatitis. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm just going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.